What's up? Check out Mal Keith looking to fly on his flying mount. So nice. There's a reason I love the Dark Elves. But that's not me. That's Captain Cracker. He's playing the Malkith build. I've got Marathi instead. Also Dark Elves. On the far side, we've got Count Noctilus being played by Ryanator. And then a Dwarf Lord being played by Weird Conscious. So the map is Toothgrass Hill. There's a giant hill. And probably has some teeth and some grass in it. We'll never know for sure. And then over here uh, is... Uh, some forest and artillery and lots of it. The dwarfs brought not one but two organ guns and a grudge thrower and there's some iron drakes and more iron drakes and just missiles all over the place. And then the vampire coast took Queen Bess, no surprise there. It's a devastating unit and a mortar and then yeah just some gunnery mob for some shooting and deck droppers. So I want to talk about this matchup uh, just really quickly. Dwarfs and Vampire Coast are two factions that the Dark Elves tend to struggle against in general. There's only a few units on the Dark Elf roster that I think can really offer a solid counter to these types of armies. And one of those units is the uh, Hydra. I think the Hydra is an absolute MVP in this matchup for uh, two reasons. Number one, it's a damage sponge. If you shoot the Hydra, it will absorb a lot of damage, it will flee, and it will often come back. And Dwarfs and Vampire Coast are low mobility factions, so they don't usually have the tools to chase the Hydra off of the field once its leadership is broken and it's started to flee. Uh, there are some deck droppers here which could potentially do that. Uh, if the opposing player is on top of their micro and maybe a couple rotting Prometheans, but these tend to be used defensively. And other than that, like you don't see the Doris with gyrocopters, so they're not going to chase the War Hydra off of the field. So for that reason, I think they are absolute MVPs. Uh, the Dark Elves have very, you know, expensive squishy infantry, so if they don't get engaged quickly and, like, tear their opponents to shred, they're going to just get bogged down and uh, lose. And Count Noctilus can, you know, summon, you know, between, let's say, six to eight units of zombie deckhand mob, depending on how you load them out. Uh, and so, yeah, if you take the time to try and fight through all of that, you're going to have a lot of trouble. Now, I want to talk a little bit about some pathing uh, errors here early on. So, Queen Bess and all of the artillery is pouring into me. You can see here how I've laid out my units, right? They're not supposed to be clumped, but because of this little bit of micro terrain here, uh, they've started to ball up as they go around this micro terrain and now all of a sudden i didn't notice this at first but i have one two three four almost five units all clumped up and against this army that is terrible so i was like even though i had the deployment really nice that one little piece of micro terrain absolutely screwed me over um so yeah <laughs> don't do what i do you can see one one hit from the queen best is like just knock this unit down to like basically half health let's like Let's look how scary this must be for these Dark Elves, like, as they're coming in. Like, the sky is just raining death on them. Look at this huge hit coming in. Oh, that is so bad. I'm a bad player. Don't be like me. Justice over here, he's got some uh, Dark Riders on the far flank. Uh, just trying to find a position, but there's not really many opportunities here. There are the Quarrelers in the back. So if the Dark Riders get too close, you know, they're going to dump some, uh, some return fire in on them. It looks like the organ guns have switched on to the War Hydra, but I'm okay with that. I want it to soak damage so that my infantry don't take that damage, right? Because the War Hydra, um, it's, it's going to be able to get this health back. Whereas my infantry, I can never get that health back. Once it's gone, it's gone. There's no more models. Their leadership is not coming back. The Hydra, if it heals up, its leadership is going to come back. I took Marathi for the debuff because I thought, you know what, she's got a niche. She's got a niche pick here. She can reduce the attack damage and help things out there. The Iron Drakes come in with some uh, fire on the War Hydra. Now you will notice because the War Hydra has um, the War Hydra does have regen. The fire damage is going to do extra extra damage to it. Um, you see here, it does have a weakness to fire of 25%. So that is a very um, problematic for me. This other War Hydra has also decided to flee now, but finally I've got my infantry units in where I want them to be. Sisters of Slaughter have found their way onto some uh, deck 
gunnery mob so that is a great great situation for me to be in if i were the uh vampire coast player i would send in those rotting prometheans against the sisters of slaughter the sisters of slaughter do not have armor pen and they're going to get bounced around like pretty hard by these rotting prometheans so instead of having them idle the prometheans could have come in there hit them and then you could pull the gunnery mob back potentially the dark riders with or sorry the dark shards are shooting in they've managed to get in range of the organ gun now and they're going to start doing a little bit of damage here. The Blackguard of Nagrand have come in and they've found their way onto the Lord. So now I'm getting some reinforcements here from uh, Justice. Balance Bar is very heavily in our opponent's favor at this point. But maybe, you know, once our units are able to close in, it's going to change things a little bit. Giant Slayers have come into a unit of Bleak Swords here. That's not an optimal matchup for them. If I were the Dwarf player, I would have saved them for a little bit later and just tried to shadow Malchus' movements. Because now that they're engaged, it's going to be a little bit harder to pull them out of the way. Uh, and Malkith is able to basically freely attack the Dwarf Lord. So that's a really good engagement for us. Giant Wind of Death coming along here. It does do some damage to the Blackguard and the Gron, but it misses the Harganath Executioner. So that's very big for us. We do have a Soul Blight going down from myself, uh, just trying to uh, reduce the damage output of all of these dark, uh, of all of this dwarf infantry, so that the, um, so that, the, <laughs> so that Captain Cracker's uh, Dark Elves have a bit more of a fighting chance. There was a big Doom Bolt coming down there from Rathi, and uh, yeah, Malkith is doing work. So we do see the Giant Slayers coming over now onto Malkith, so he will have to be careful. It's a huge blade wind ripping across the dwarf uh, front line there. Very, very nice stuff out of um, Captain Cracker. And the uh, Malkith does withdraw here because Count Noctilus has come over, plus you have the Giant Slayers. So even though there's only 28 of them left, that's not a place where Malkith wants to be. I was able to send over some more Bleak Swords, and now, you know, the Giant Slayers uh they're again not in a matchup that they want to be in so things are balancing out a little bit i do have some dread spirits that have pushed up uh, i mean right up to the organ gun it's still somehow firing i don't really understand that uh okay now it's in melee so that's good news for uh, us the dread spears bleak swords i do have a couple units that have kind of fled and are starting to rally and amongst those is the hydra so the two hydras are back now and i'm thinking all right yes uh, the front lines managed to engage. We've got some pressure on them. Now Keith has found his way onto the Corollers. And uh, you know, now the Doris and the Vampire Coast are starting to take some heat. Because the Rotting Prometheans didn't deal with these Sisters of Slaughter and other weak units earlier on, now they're free to start pressuring uh, and pushing up into these other pieces of artillery. There is still a Mortar online. There is still Queen Bess, but Queen Bess is starting to get low on ammo. Granted, it's at 329 kills, and uh, by the end of the battle, it's going to have a lot more than that. So I have not been able to shut it down in this fight. But, I mean, there was a Zombie Pirate Deckhead Mons, Robbie Prometheans, so, like, there were a lot of resources committed to keeping that Queen Bess alive, and in the end, I, I guess I just decided it wasn't worth it. I wanted to take off the organ guns, you know, pressure out the dwarf leadership, and deal with that first. So the Charybdis has found its way into the um, running Prometheans, so that's a great situation for it to be in. With the backup support of the Blackguard of Nagrand, these will not last for very long. Malkith is in here and doing work on the Longbeards and the Ironbreakers with the um, with the Giant Slayers out of the picture now. That's a much safer place for him to be in. Zombie Pirate Gunnery Mob have been summoned and they're shooting in, I believe, at the Charybdis. We do have some Overwatch from these uh, Corollers shooting uh, in at some fleeing Bleak Swords. I think they should have been repositioned onto Malkith. Um, but some units here have rallied and they're going to come right into the coilers, prevent them sh sh from shooting. The Dark Riders with re repeater crossbows, I mean, they have ammo, but they're not going to sit there and just sh trade shots with the coilers. So they go right into melee, and uh, with the support of the Bleak Swords, they're going to give them a lot to think about. The Dwarf Lord, meanwhile, he's gotten pretty low. Marathi and um, the Hydra are just going to give him a little kiss goodbye, and let's see how this ends. Ooh, you do not want to be him. Down he goes. And he's not getting up. Poor Dwarf Lord. So, yeah, Marathi uh, found her target. And with the Dwarf Lord gone, you're going to see the leadership bars of these units start to go down. The Charybdis does have an ability that lowers the, uh, me sorry, lowers the leadership of... Um, 
of the door basically units in a, in a radius around it and uh with with the dwarf lord gone plus that leadership debuff uh and the terror they're gonna just head for the hills so very impressive stuff there usually it's very hard to break the leadership of the doors so the war hydra now that it's finished off the dwarf lord it's gonna have to come back into the fight here it does try and drop a, a breath on um the queen bass let's see if it happens now uh I mean, I didn't realize it was out of ammo when I when I issued this attack order, but uh, oh, uh, there it goes. Maybe, yeah. Um, but I realized that it actually shoots the breath at the artillery piece and not at the, um, you know, all of the crew in the back. So it actually didn't do very much damage. And I would say basically save your hydro hydro breast for other stuff. There, there, there it is. I was a little busy, but yeah. Yeah, you can see it did basically no damage there, so that was a total waste. Um, so yeah, Marathi and the Hydra are very low. Uh, balance bar is still pretty much locked dead even, right? But with the artillery sort of out of position, uh, we're feeling a little bit better about the situation. We do have a couple very tattered infantry units that are rallying, but it's going to be a, tr a challenge for... The vampire coast to take out these uh large units the hydra the charybdis with marathi i mean unless they have some mass of their own or more slayers uh they're not going to be able to to tackle them and um you know one thing i've noticed is uh you know vampire coast and doi farmies they tend to go a little bit wider uh to just you know create a buffer around their artillery but if you do that and go too wide uh, you don't have the tools to deal with very large units and the large units can kind of just push through. So yeah, very, very close fight here. Um, still balance bar is, is even. Noctilus is at full health and he's got some running Prometheans in here with him. They're going to find their way onto this uh, very, very low health Hydra. And I was like, if I lose that Hydra, it could be bad news for us. But fortunately, the Charybdis is nearby. He's not afraid of the rotting Prometheans. Noctilus can do damage because he does have a very high weapon damage plus a bonus versus large and armor pen. So that could be trouble, but the mass of the units are probably going to bump uh, Noctilus around a little bit. So even with that anti-large, without... Um, if, if the Rotting Prometheans basically get knocked off, then he's going to just be like bumper card around by these giant monsters. So yeah, the Rotting Prometheans have abandoned Queen, Bre Queen Bess at this point because there's no point in protecting it. It's gone. And uh, yeah, things are starting to look good for us. Another, what is this? Another gunnery mob is summoned here. Soul Blight's gone down, debuffing uh, Count Noctilus. Uh, Malkith is very, very low now, at about 1,600 health. Marathi's in there. She's she's not afraid of Noctilus. That's a good fight for her to be in. And she's going to debuff all of these units around here, right? So the zombie pirate uh, deckhands mob with polearm, they have a melee, melee attack of zero because of the uh, presence of Marathi. So she can be a really, really good counter to dwarf and vampire coast armies. Um, you can sometimes combo her with a death egg as well if you want to go even more like debuffs on melee attack but i think it's not really necessary here so um you know with the final little bit of this fight here uh you can see the balance bar is shifted in our favor i'm just gonna show you a little bit more cinematic action here so Cam noctilus is running and trying to go get some ice cream and just call it a day a couple rally rallied uh dwarf warriors coming in here i think there's some long there's some long beards to be specific but yeah look at all these heads from the hydra they are just a menace to deal with mvps in this matchup for sure one is super super low but the other one's still doing okay if i can just break off this this gunnery white and the last bit of running prometheans uh it'll be okay with six models left, the uh, rotting Prometheans are well, rotting. They're crumbling. And uh, yeah, so I'm going to fast forward a little bit here. And I thought I was going to do the cinematic action. Look at him karateing with Marathi, but Marathi's a fucking ninja too, so she doesn't care. And uh, yeah, so cool to see those two fight it out. Dragons, Hydras, you know the deal. Let's go to the end screen. Okay, so... 
in this battle, uh, Marathi, she was awesome with the soul blights she had some huge debuffs she reduced the melee attack of those chaff infantry and uh yeah she super super happy with her sisters of slaughter i mean they didn't get attacked by the running prometheans so they like completely cut up all of the chaff infantry that uh, ryanator deployed um they, they got into the gunnery mobs so those just were great situations for them my dark shards just got shot to pieces i only brought them to deal with dwarfs and um you know, they could have done some work against the dwarves, but because of that pathing error early on um, and just the sheer volume of artillery fire, I mean, with Vampire Coast Plus Dwarf shooting into my uh, infantry, like, they pretty much just didn't have a chance to get much use. I'm astonished that these Bleak Swords, Bleak Swords managed to pick up some kills, like 133 and 117 on these units. It's not shabby considering, you know, how tattered they were at the start of the fight. And both my War Hydras, I mean, you know, chevrons <laughs> four chevrons between them so they definitely definitely did some work there i was happy with that um captain cracker excellent micro on malkith it's very hard to keep him up in a fight like that uh he did find the uh dwarf lord which was the perfect you know engagement for him to be on the dark riders with repeater crossbows i mean 108 kills with a skirmish unit like that that's a pretty solid contribution so that's very nice Charybdis with a debuff on the leadership was helpful versus the dwarfs. I mean, the Charybdis does special against specialize for anti-large. So, I mean, bringing it against dwarfs, you're probably better off with a Hydra because dwarfs tend not to bring very much large. Uh, but, you know, it could have done some work against Vampire Coast if the Vampire Coast had large. And it turns out it did help a lot with those rotting Prometheans. Um, Ryanator, he brought Count Noctos on foot. That can be like a real problem to deal with because he can just summon so many things and it's very hard to just like stipe him out or, um, yeah, just take him off the map without, uh, you know, grinding through all of his stuff first. So, you know, very solid army composition for Ryanator. I think the rotting Prometheans could have been a little bit more active, but look at Queen Bass, 492 kills. I mean, there's a reason people bring Queen Bass and against Dark Elves, it is vicious. Uh, Weird Conscious, uh, he did okay with the Dwarf Lord. Uh, I think his missile units could have been spread out a little bit more. It's cool that he brought the Flame Cannons and the Iron Drakes. I mean, those are a really nice counter to Hydra play, right? So he did have some nice tools there. The Giant Slayers picked up 94 kills, but uh, with these units, I mean, you're not really looking for a high volume of kills. You're looking for high value kills. And I don't think they were able to get onto the Charybdis or Malkith or um any of the hydras so i don't think yeah max value was obtained there but uh super fun fight obviously it came down to the wire you know balance bar was way in our opponent's favor for most of the fight and uh yeah it was a super fun one so thanks for the games and hopefully i'll get to play you guys again soon take it easy guys bye